So hello to all the wonderful people out there. This is Dr. Hitesh Nathani, your mentor, your guide, your friend for the subject of anesthesia on this wonderful platform of an academy. So let us begin our today's session. Before that, let me tell you where all can you find me on. You can find me on the wonderful platform, amazing platform for new PD preparation that is an academy. On this platform, I am taking a batch course on anesthesia that is right now the plus course that is going on that is concise batch course. Here's a link for that. Recently, just now we completed a complete batch course in anesthesia. This is the course which I just started yesterday. So you can log into that, you can come and attend it, it is a plus subscriber batch course. This is a second link in which we take integrated sessions and I have taken the anesthesia point of view for the hematology subject. Yes, the topic of hematology, how do we integrate it with anesthesia. All the 19 educators come together for one topic and we take an integrated batch course for you. Next, you can find me on this telegram group which is by the same name that is Anesthesia Simplified by Dr. Hitesh where we interact where I am available 24-7 for you guys. You can ask me any doubts, any questions on the telegram group. There is daily polls on the telegram group, the doubt solving sessions and as well as quiz based sessions are also there which happen on the telegram group daily. So you can connect with me personally on the telegram group. Just we concluded this month that is the 10 special classes which were the 10 free classes for you guys yes. If any one of you wants to see how do we interact on the Unacademy platform, these are the free live classes which were the special classes for which we concluded 10 special classes for you yes. Just go and have a look and you will be amazed at what amount of teaching is going on on Unacademy. And those of you who are watching our academy on the YouTube channel and if you have not subscribed, click on the bell icon, subscribe to this channel that is an academy need PD live and so that you will start getting the notifications for the an academy whenever we are coming up with next live sessions. So on that note, let us begin our today's session. Before that, I just want to tell you one more thing about the live classes. Yes, I just told you that recently we concluded 10 live classes for anesthesia subject this month. There are more upcoming live sessions, live classes which are free for you guys. Yes? These are called special free live classes. Yes, Where interaction is proper, there are live quiz based sessions, a lot of people come, you ask the doubts, you put up the questions, image based questions are asked by you guys, we also put up some image based questions and such is the interaction. We interact one on one there. Right? So attend those free life classes and if you find those interesting, you can for sure subscribe to our plus platform where we are taking n number of courses right now. Yes, there is a special NEED PG 2121 course which has just started. So all those who of you are thinking that in 6 months time, how am I going to complete the syllabus, just subscribe to our plus, plus platform. Take up with the referral code of Dr. Hitesh. You can apply the referral code Dr. Hitesh and you will get 10% discount on that. And that NEET PG 2021 course is for you guys who are thinking that in next 5 months how am I going to complete the syllabus. We are going to complete the reading plus there will be 2 revisions. Along with that there will be a medical marathon for MCQs the way we had last year which will be completing 2 medical marathons in the last 2 months in the month of November and December. So I'll see you guys in the plus class which will be very much useful for you. Let us begin our today's session with the first question which is there on your screen right now. The following device is most suitable for option A head and neck surgeries, option B laryngeal surgery, option C thoracic surgery, option D that is gastric surgery. So the device which is shown in your figure that is option A, picture A and B, what does it indicate? Yes. By looking at the picture, you must be able to say that this is some form of endotracheal tube, yes? Is it a normal endotracheal tube that we use or is it some specialized form of endotracheal tube, some specialized type of endotracheal tube that you should use? For that, you should be knowing what exactly is the basic endotracheal tube looks like, yes? You cannot go and define that something is diseased unless and until you know what is normal. 
yes so whenever you know the normal physiology then only you can say okay the physiology that i am seeing right now it is not normal so that means there is some disease process going on yes the same way you should know all the basics of all the subjects when you know the basics of endotracheal tube then on that you can count on okay this is a septation type of endotracheal tube so what will it look like so let us have a look this is how a normal special endotracheal tube that we use most frequently day in and day out looks like this is known as made up of pvc and this is a endotracheal tube yes pvc is polyvinyl chloride that is a plastic material which we use and this is the most frequently used endotracheal tube yes it is of the company that is we are cortex there is medical any number of companies can come but what are the normal parts of this this here is the bevel end this here little is the morphis eye that you can see this is the cuff of the endotracheal tube then the blue line that you are seeing passing all throughout the tube here that is the radio opaque line this little one that is coming out is known as pilot balloon which is used to inflate the cuff of the endotracheal tube and here is the connector which connects to the anesthesia socket yes so this is how a normal endotracheal tube looks like now if you see between this and the tubes which are asked in this figure what is the variation here you will see that there is a curve which is present here right and there is a curve again which is present here the tube is not the way that we way we see a normal endotracheal tube which is a semi circular yes it has got curves in the upper direction and lower direction so what do we call it we call it preformed tube we call it preformed tube what do you mean by preformed tube that means there is a preformed bent present in this yes there is this preformed bent present in this tube so why is this bent which is present here what is the use for this bent which is present which is preformed in this tube and which is not present in the normal endotracheal tube yes this bent when it comes out of the oral cavity or nasal cavity wherever you insert it it directly goes into the cephalic direction or into the quadrant direction that is north pole and south pole yes so this goes into the quadrant direction that is known as south pole tube and this goes into the cephalic direction so it is known as north pole tube so what are the types of these tubes these are the subtypes of ra that is ring and air elvin tube ring and air elvin tube this is the full form of re this also has been asked a question what is the full form of re which is a pre formed tube which is which tube has got pre formed bent in it yes so these are rae tube now where exactly do we use this tube we use it in the head and neck face surgery yes for mandible surgeries we put the tube we take it up to the north pole yes so that this area is free for the surgeon so this is known as north pole ra tube for surgeries of the oro maxillofacial surgery we put the tube and we get it down so this is known as south pole rae tube that is ring and air elvin tube so surgeries of the head neck and face so oro maxillofacial surgeries this is used cleft lip cleft palate tonsils also this can be used so these surgeries these tubes are peculiarly used in head neck face surgeries so what is the correct answer here the following device is most suitable for head and neck surgery so this is option a will be the correct answer laryngeal surgery thoracic surgery gastric surgery there are special types of tubes for thoracic surgery we typically prefer a double lumen tube yes laryngeal surgery we have got laryngeal tubes for that yes micro laryngeal tubes and gastric surgery for gastric surgery there is no need to use any separate tube you can use a normal polyvinyl chloride pvc endotracheal tube that we use for our surgery purposes yes so this is how this question has been framed remember this rae tube this question is kind of a favorite for the examiners and it has been asked time and again so remember this image is mcq very important moving on to the next question the following capnograph suggest what is it a capnograph of rebreathing is it a capnograph of spontaneous efforts is it a capnograph showing pulmonary embolism or is it a capnograph showing malignant hypothermia capnograph is one of the most favorite questions of the examiners yes you should know capnograph topic in and out yes so how is the capnograph formed what are the various functions of capnography 
what are the various types of capnographic images that they depict what exactly is the problem which is going on in the patient are some of the questions which the examiner asks you time and again and this was one of the questions which was asked in this year's BD. yes so here you will see that capnograph is nothing but it is depiction of n tidal carbon dioxide in millimeters of mercury with regards to time yes so what is it actually telling you it is telling you how much amount of carbon dioxide is coming out once the patient is expiring with regards to time yes so is it the capnographic waveform suggesting rebreathing spontaneous efforts pulmonary embolism or malignant hypothermia how do you actually recognize that first you should know what are the various types of capnograph what are the various phases of capnograph so this is phase one two three and four yes the normal capnograph has got four phases yes so from phase one to phase three this is the phase of expiration and phase four is nothing but it is the phase of inspiration correct so what does phase one signifies phase two phase three signify they signify when the patient is expiring phase one will have dead space ventilation that means the air which is not taking part into the gaseous exchange so that is dead space is the physiological dead space which is present into the trachea primary bronchus upper airway that is dead space ventilation where gaseous exchange is not taking place phase 2 you will see that the capnographic level etco2 level is started to rise up that means from the alveoli now the gas is entering into the capnographic monitor so this is phase 2 which will have dead space ventilation plus alveolar ventilation Phase 3 is the plateau phase that you can see here, yes, this is a plateau phase. So in phase 3 you will see only alveolar gas ventilation which is happening here, no other gases will be here, yes, dead space ventilation is over here. So therefore it is plateaued now, the capnograph is in the plateau state right now. And phase 4 you will see that the again capnograph ETCO2 level is falling now. So this is known as phase of inspiration, correct, this is a phase of inspiration, so phase 4 is phase of inspiration now here you can see this little cleft which is coming in phase 3 of ventilation yes this little cleft that means in the alveolar phase of ventilation in the alveolar phase of expiration there is this little cleft what is the name of this cleft it is known as curare cleft it is known as curare cleft why is curare cleft so important yes what does it signify curare the name was actually determined and derived from the muscle relaxant that we are using it was used first in the year 1942 the curare muscle relaxant yes so from that as you can see when this little phase comes down this downward as i've already told you that downward reflection reflects what a phase of inspiration that means when the patient is into the third phase of ventilation there is little jerky movements coming up yes so that means the patient is trying to take spontaneous breath that means the patient is coming out of muscle relaxant or it is time for you to actually give another top of another dose of muscle relaxant or if the surgery is now over if the surgery is over it is time for you to give reversal agent that means the patient is now out of the action of muscle relaxant spontaneous efforts of patients have started to come back there is little diaphragm movement which is happening and so now it is time for you to give reversal agent to the patient yes if the surgery is going to be lasting for a longer period of time that means you have to give more muscle relaxants more top of muscle relaxants the earlier dose whichever you have given whether it was short acting intermediate acting or long acting muscle relaxant that dose has now come to conclude yes that is almost the duration of action is over so rebreathing no it is not of rebreathing in rebreathing you will see the baseline is elevated so it will never touch the baseline in rebreathing yes Spontaneous efforts, yes, this is a capnograph revealing spontaneous effort. This is known as curare cleft. Yes, curare cleft. Pulmonary embolism, for sure not, because in pulmonary embolism there will be ventilation perfusion movement and a cleft that is curare cleft which is seen in this is not seen there. And malignant hyperthermia is an altogether different topic which is very important in that you will see increasing ETCO2 level up to like 80 millimeters of mercury that highest but here it is what it is up to 30 and 40 that is in the normal room so in 
a malignant hypothermia the ecu2 level rises almost twice the normal level so that is what it says is so following capnograph reveals spontaneous efforts of the patient moving on to the next question the following blade laryngoscope is used in which of the following conditions yes is it used in difficult airways is it used in rapid sequence intubation is it used for adult intubation or option d is it used for pediatric intubation yes so the correct answer for this would be yes first you should be able to identify what is this blade signifying yes this is whether curved blade or is it a straight blade yes by the figure itself you will be able to identify that this is a straight blade laryngoscope yes this is a laryngoscopic blade which is straight blade yes curved blade what is the name of curved blade it is known as macintosh blade straight blade is known as miller's blade yes so where do we use curved blade that is macintosh blade is mostly used in adult population whereas miller's blade or straight blade is used in pediatric population now why do we use this straight blade or miller's blade in pediatric population you will see here this end of the cave straight blade that is known as the tip of the blade is used to lift the epiglottis what exactly is the need for this tip to be straight and to lift the epiglottis while performing laryngoscopy in pediatric population remember in pediatric population the airway anatomy is different from that of adult anatomy yes the epiglottis the glottic opening is a little higher and anterior higher and anterior as compared to adults in pediatric population that is one thing second there is the narrow part is subglottic subglottic is the narrowest part but recent study says that the glottic opening as in adults is the same in pediatric population the glottic opening is the narrowest part yes third the epiglottis epiglottis in pediatric population is very floppy and leaf shaped it is falling down hanging so whenever you want to perform laryngoscopy as an adult when we are using this curved blade or macintosh blade we put it into the valvula and we lift from the valvula we do not lift the epiglottis whereas in adult in pediatric population since the epiglottis is very floppy you take the epiglottis below this straight blade here and you lift along with the epiglottis so that the glottic opening is visible since it is anterior the epiglottis floppy therefore we use this straight blade in pediatric intubation it is preferred so the correct answer for this question is option d that is this straight blade that is miller's laryngoscopic blade straight blade is used in pediatric intubation right moving on to the next question this is a question which was asked by most of you to take it in this session because we have taken once similar image base in my last session if you want you can go and check out that session of the last youtube identify this image which is there on your screen right now is it for central venous pressure is it an iv cannula is it a swan gans catheter or is it a urinary catheter yes as you can see in this image this here is the catheter this is the part where we fix it onto the skin and there are three ports which are present here yes for injecting the drug similar image i have taken in the previous session which was of swan gans catheter remember the difference in swan gans and a central venous catheter is in swan gans there are five ports which are present yes so those extra ports was one for inflating the cuff which is go which will go into the pulmonary artery and the second one was for the temperature monitoring apart from that it also had these three ports which are drug injecting port which are used for drug injection now in this it can either be single lumen it can either be double lumen or it can either be triple lumen the one which is showed in this figure has got one two and three lumen so this is known as triple lumen central venous pressure line yes so this is a triple lumen cvp line yes it is used for measuring the cvp that is central venous pressure what is the normal central venous pressure yes guys it is 3 to 8 millimeters of mercury normal central venous pressure is 3 to 8 millimeters of mercury yes if it is above it or if it is below it what are the indications why do we measure the central venous pressure what are the indications for in inserting a central venous pressure line most of the times in surgeries we in insert the central venous pressure line because 
whenever we are expecting major blood loss whenever we are expecting major fluid shifts in the surgeries which is going to be lasting for longer duration of time there will be major fluid shifts so you need to know whether to start with vasopressors or to give iv fluids this cvp monitoring actually helps us to decide that and also one very important indication for inserting cvp line is when we are expecting or suspecting high chances of venous air embolism so that once you have inserted it you can aspirate the air whenever there is suspected venous air embolism in the surgery phase so in cases where we are suspecting high chances of venous air embolism we can aspirate the air so there we use this cvp line also the other indications in the anesthesia for surgical purposes are major blood losses where you are expecting peripheral line is difficult major fluid shifts in the surgery and or whether to give iv or vasopressors this will actually help you indicate that yes and also in the post operative period if the patient is going to be on iv fluids for a longer duration duration of time if it is surgery of the abdomen the bowels are involved then you are not expecting to give anything by oral methods for the fluids of by oral methods for the patients and you are going to be giving large amount of iv fluids during the course of surgery as well in post op central venous pressure line is the ideal choice to do that yes iv cannula swan gans catheter we have already discussed in a previous session you can go through that urinary catheter is a separate entity iv cannula we have discussed it in our plus sessions the types the various sizes and the color coding of iv cannula as well moving on to the next question again an image based question so identify the following yes is it a capnograph showing copd is it a capnograph showing bronchial asthma is it a capnograph showing bronchospasm or all of the above as you can see in this capnograph it is i have told you it is a measurement of end tidal carbon dioxide against time yes so now you will see we have already discussed about the four phases yes phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and phase 4 where exactly are you looking at the abnormality here yes previously there was a cleft in phase 3 now what is happening the phase 3 is not plateaued out it is slanting it is sloping yes in previous question we have seen that the phase 3 was plateaued out it was plateau phase but here you can see it is going upward it is sloping type so what kind of capnograph we call it we call it shark fin appearance why do we call it shark fin appearance we have seen the fin of a shark right so this is how a shark fin looks like yes the same is the presentation of this capnogram therefore it is called as shark fin appearance right so now if the plateau phase that is the phase 3 is sloping the alpha angle which is here for this is obtuse it is increased so what does it indicate it indicates that the alveolar gases are taking longer time to empty and it is emptying not simultaneously but one after the other that means there is some obstruction to emptying of the alveolar gases so what are the cases what are the reasons for obstruction of emptying of the alveolar gases that means there is some spasm yes the spasm can be either into the bronchus it can be either into the laryngeal wherever it is or there is some partial kinking of the tube that means causing obstruction so what are the most frequent causes of spasm under anesthesia yes is that the patient is having bronchial asthma which will lead to bronchospasm either the patient has got airway reactivity hyperreactivity which is causing bronchial spasm or the patient is a known case of copd in which there will be high chances of again the patient landing up into spasm so copd yes correct answer bronchial bronchial asthma exactly correct we will see this kind of capnograph in bronchial asthma bronchospasm yes that is one of the reasons for this sloping or obtuse angle of alpha and sloping slope of phase 3 so all three are correct answers here so option d that is all of the above represent this capnograph that is shark fin appearance right so again i am telling you where can you can find me on this plug wonderful platform of an academy these are the links for my plus courses where i am taking the classes currently one is going on you can find me on the telegram group this is the link anesthesia simplified by dr hitesh the special classes that we have conducted 10 free special classes guys just come on and have a look
you'll be amazed at what kind of a teaching is going on in an academy and those of you watching the youtube channel click on the bell icon subscribe to an academy life pd i'll see you in my next class till then this is dr hitesh signing off take care study hard stay disciplined bye bye